Didn't I close it? Action. Action. Stop recording. Are we acting now? No, it's not. It's on. Yeah, it looks as though it's on. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks as though we're on here. I'll centre myself in the in the screen, which might help you. Otherwise, you'll think there's something gone wrong with your eyes overnight. So this is um, the third Sunday of Easter. Now, excuse any snorting noises I'm making because I've gone in the, the sinuses. So please excuse. Um, now, because it's the third Sunday of Easter, what are we doing? Are we running for about um, five Sundays or something? Or more of Easter, which includes uh, the Easter session stretched out because it's supposed to be the most intensive training period of the year. Throw in Lent, of course, which is 30 days, 30, 40 days, 40 nights of, um, I suppose, the equivalent of fasting and abstaining from whatever. But then once, the, once you get to Easter and you start baptising adults and wrapping them up in white robes and saying, you are now members in full communion with the ch Catholic Church, go out and be disciples in the street. Don't frighten anybody, but um, show by your de even demeanour, I suppose, that you're onto something, without frightening anyone. So um, Easter then drags on for a month, I think, and finishes with a day called Pentecost Sunday, um, when in fact, um, allegedly, your Jesus disappears entirely, because having been crucified on the Friday, having been in the grave on the Saturday, having got out of the grave on the dawn of Sunday, um, and then they're wandering around apparently, re 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 reinforcing the message to his closest disciples, um, reassuring people. So that's the story behind these 50 days up until Pentecost, and you throw in what used to be Ascension Thursday, which I think, I think, was relocated somewhere like the Sunday nearest, so that it meant that not just the few could turn up on the Thursday when in the Western world people are working, but um, on the Sunday when the general membership may be able to, if it's so inclined, turn up uh, and do something about the thinking and feeling about the ascension of Jesus. Um, in other words, he's gone, he's gone, out of sight, but not out of mind, because guess what, folks? The spirit of Jesus returns. What we call Pentecost. Anyhow, be that as it may, this passage is before he goes. Before he clears out, he's going to do something extra. And uh, you've got two blokes who've disappeared apparently out of town. They got shot. They followed Jesus in the movement, the Jesus movement. And they were terribly distressed and upset. And they ended up almost like sort of post-trauma stress disorder people. Um, because one minute they're followers of a... Well, apparently a pop popular, if not with the authorities, certainly not. But with, um, with the Jerusalem crowd of uh, outcasts, and by outcasts, I mean people sitting around in rags, I mean, I mean outcasts, uh, they weren't allowed into the synagogue and they weren't allowed into the temple because their way of life was unclean. But don't ask me any more about that, um, there's a list of infringements which would make you unclean. And they wouldn't necessarily be immoral behaviour, they would simply be what we would call uh, administrative um, offences. In other words, you didn't wash the pots and pans. You did. You touched a body at a funeral. Um, you worked on Saturday. You, or when you say worked, I mean something might have happened, like the horse fell in the river, and you said, "I've got to drag the horse out of the river," and somebody else said, "No, nah, you can't do that." Because the rule says thou shalt keep holy the Sabbath day. You, run, you can't go into the synagogue anymore. You, 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 
you've, you've, you've blotted your copybook. So all those people, an enormous number of people who felt and were in, in, in most cases outcasts from um, organised religion. So they're out there in droves. I mean, some of them were business people. Some of them were, um, I suppose, some of them may even have been members of, of the priestly families. Um, and their teenage son or one of them had knowingly or unknowingly um, disturbed the peace, so to speak, by not, not, not observing the, the, the law, the Ten Commandments, the 130 by laws, um, which had been installed by the clerics and the rabbis as being the, um, the lifeblood of anybody who was wanting to practice Judaism. Anyway, these two blokes had joined up with the Jesus movement. They could well have been pious Jews at the same time, gone to synagogue and gone to temple at the same time, been walking around uh, with open air sessions with Jesus of Nazareth, workshops. So anyway, their uh, world collapsed on them on the Friday, and uh, rather dramatically too, because I mean it wasn't that he dropped dead of a heart attack or something, and it was he was picked up on the Thursday night, um, and he was locked up, and he was uh, tortured, um, and and then pu publicly uh, condemned to be lynched. Um, by the Roman military governor, um, having been prodded and probed by the, uh, the chief priests and the uh, anyway, be that as it may, the fact of the matter is, when he was sentenced, he was uh, tortured, and he was uh, then taken out, taken down, as they'd say in the British courts in the days of the death sentence, taking him down. And off he would go and then end up on a rubbish tip outside of Jerusalem where uh, executions were performed because they were extremely unclean, even though they'd been arranged by the clergy. The clergy wouldn't do them themselves. So uh, having been executed, that's the end of the movement, according to uh, a lot of the members, and these two shot through. Um, they must have come from Emmaus which is a village up the, up the street a few miles, I don't know how long, but it was a, they could get there in a day. Um, so they set off to go home. Um, downcast. Um, maybe, and no, I keep saying probably post-trauma stress disorder, because it was the end of the world as they knew it. So one of them is called Cleophas, or C-L-E-O-P-H-A-S, and I've written a little thing here, um, these are two disciples, the two disciples, including Cleopas. His words are, we're hoping that it was he who would redeem Israel. We're hoping Israel and Palestine, we call it now part of it, but all that territory under Roman rule, previously under Greek rule, previously under Babylonian rule, previously under Persian rule, um, that little kingdom... Um, was always on the lookout for somebody to come and change the balance of power. And I always end up in getting the, the wrong end of the pineapple, so to speak. They ended up getting the chopper. Um, there are lots of young men, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of young men would have been crucified from one end of the place to the, to the other end uh, for attempts to dislodge. Um, even the Romans, I think, there were a few insurrections, as they call them. Um, that led to the uh, to the um, decimation of of the uh, militant population of the of the Jews. Anyway, they had, they were going over and over and over and over and over, like you do, and you go over and over and over, make themselves feel worse. Um, what was Cleopas thinking of? Obviously, he was thinking of the del deliverance from Roman oppression with Jesus' death. That hope vanished for him. It would be safer out of town for the followers. Uh, Jesus had taught often that he was the fulfilment of the old ways, the prophets and the Lord. Not the, he hadn't come to destroy it, but I mean that's the uh, message, the, the misinformation that the priests 
that was spreading around the place, misinformation. So he'd be executed on, uh, on misinformation provided to the uh, Roman governor by um, the elite Jewish class. Uh, several of us did just that kind of job. It, I, I reflected on this a few years ago um, when we were told by Vatican II and the headquarters in Rome, please get out into the general population and uh, help people, Roman Catholics, young parish churches, to understand the great thing that Vatican II was, was, was trying to encourage them to become, namely a church open to everybody, um, all that kind of thing. Um, we have now gone off the air because I pressed the, uh, didn't press the button. But here we are again, folks. There we are. Electronic devices disappeared for a fraction of the time. And we were just talking about how, in my own time, uh, Vatican II said, listen, why don't you open the windows of the church and let the fresh air in? In other words, let the world in to tell us how we're going and check up on us. Um, and we need to get out. That's what Vatican II said. So that's the kind of news that would have, uh, what? It warmed the cockles of the heart of Catholics. A lot, no, not all, but lots and lots of Catholics, clerics included, bishops included, in those uh, years after Vatican II, which is about, what, 1950s and 60s. Um, and that's the kind of thing. These guys needed to have somebody come and reassure them everything's going to be all right. So this guy drifts up with them. They don't know who it is. And the same with everyone I'm saying in, in life. I've just come back from a funeral and I got inspired by the kind of stuff that people were saying, not only about the deceased, but about other people who worked with her. You know, you, you get inspiration from the least likely sources. You, if you don't keep alert, you're going to miss out on lots and lots and lots of inspirational people and even nature itself is inspirational when you, when you, when you least expect it, you know. The occasional bird call, the occasional dog in the street, whatever, flower, whatever. Those of us who live in the big cities, of course, are sensorily deprived with all this stuff, so it's very hard for us to get messages from, um, from Mother Nature. But we can get messages from, from one another. And if you live in an area that's a beautiful area, I mean, apart from nature itself, you've also got art and architecture and things that if people have taken trouble to enhance the area where you're living, well then you get lifted. And that's what these guys were looking for. Anyway, they got it from this mysterious character who joined them along the way and said, what's up? Are you okay? And then um, reassured them everything's going to be all right. They didn't say, oh, it's Jesus. No, they didn't say that at all. But they said, well, here's somebody who's looking from, at this mess from another point of view. and. Uh, they're grateful for it, so come and have a, your tea with us. So they got to Emmaus and they invited the bloke in and they were all sitting around the table apparently and uh, broke bread, passed around a cup of wine, whatever. And it dawned on them, this might be the, seems so close atmospherically, visually, emotionally, to what um, Jesus used to do. Uh, the night before Passovers and especially the night before the last Passover and the night of the last Passover no, the night before the last Passover which we call the Holy Thursday the last supper so anyway, they got a rush of adrenaline and they got excited and all the rest he disappeared as so often happens when you have some kind of a warm rush of inspiration or warm feelings or something it doesn't last forever uh, it's gone but it was there and it went so that's the end of that that's um, um, it says here we were impelled like the Emmaus to first to carry the good news to our nearest and dearest and then broadcast it within our wider spheres of influence because after they'd been through that they didn't hesitate they jumped on their bikes, so to speak, turned around, walked the rest of the and walked the distance back to Jerusalem, and told the other comrades 
guess what, folks? What? Um, he turned up in um, on the road to Emmaus. So it's that kind of Emmaus experience, like Paul with his Damascus experience, um, converted on the road to Damascus. This is more or less a conversion on the road to Emmaus. So um, I could have a conversion on the road to Albert Park or something. Uh, if I keep my eyes and ears open, you know, and the eyes of the Japanese used to talk about the eyes of the heart, you see. So if she's in there like a block of stone, well then you're not going to get these insights getting through to the soul. Anyway, that's enough for the day. We'll meet again hopefully. Uh, we do know where, we do know when, which is next Sunday at the same time, folks. I press the button on it, I'm still on. What will I do? Press stop. Twice again. <laughs>